Cisco SecureX, Integration, Threat Grid. So we're going to focus on integration. We're going to get some Cisco security uh, technologies integrated first. Here we're in threat response. And, and what I'm showing here is, is that uh, you can add modules within threat response or in SecureX, and they'll automatically show up in either platform. So it simplifies the integration. It, you know, it streamlines it, you know, saving you having to go into multiple different products or platforms and do the integration each time. Um, so that's pretty cool. Here you can see, you know, we've got our modules here. You've got, you know, email security, firepower, you've got titration, orbital, you know, you got your, your security management appliance for web and email, and you got StealthWatch Enterprise and ThreatGrid, right? And integration is pretty simple. Um, and you're going to see this in a lot of the integrations with the Cisco uh, security stack. Very simple, gives you a quick start in information in regards to what you need to do to get the integration um, to happen, um, but it's pretty quick. So what we'll do here is I'm just gonna jump into Threat Grid, and I'm gonna have to log in here. So let me log in. So we can see, you know, a little bit of the threat board, uh, threat grid dashboard. We can very quickly change the preferences to dusk mode. And you can see on the right at the top, the API key. So we'll just copy off that API key and you can see a little message at the bottom, right? And at the bottom, you can also see the ribbon, the ribbon from SecureX, right? It follows you. Um, into uh, the other platforms as you go into them so you maintain context. And that's it. That's all there is to it. We've now got ThreatGrid integrated. And so we can now go in and add or customize dashboards. We can launch from here, um, meaning from SecureX. The integration's already done in, for Cisco Threat Response now. You can see all the dashboard elements that I could add. I'm just going to grab top IP addresses, top domains, maybe top behavioral indicators. Again, you would grab the dashboards that you might be interested in. And as they come in, you can see already, um, you know, I've got some good data there. Change just the last 30 days. Now, originally my dashboards kept resetting a little bit, right? Each of the uh, dashlets, if that's what you want to call them, would, would reset. Um, but I think they resolved that in on a uh, an update just recently as well. So, so there's no issue there moving them around and it remembering where you moved them and, and, and the position of everything and the size. So again, you can resize these. You can get three, four in a, you know, in a, in a line if you, if you wanted to, um, and I'm just playing around here, just moving things around. The nice thing about this though is, is I've got some good information at the tip of my hands, right? I see a bunch of top IP addresses, I see top domains and behavioral indicators. And if I wanted to go into any of these to, you know, understand a little bit more details around that, I could obviously pivot right into ThreatGrid from here. Launch ThreatGrid. From the portal, I jump in. Um, obviously, I can use Threat Grid. I've got other videos on that, but um, but I can come in here, do a search. Um, obviously, I could have pivoted into specific data from SecureX that I might have been interested in. Um, this advanced search capability is pretty neat. Um, and here's a bunch of uh, kind of tips. Uh, how the platform works or at least the search engine here works again uh, I'm not going to use it here I'm just showing you that you know very quickly I can pivot into the platform uh, submit a, sa a sample maybe unrelated to what I'm looking at or specifically related to something maybe it was just Shaw that I saw here and I wanted to pivot into threat grid to, to learn a little bit more about it again it's all about visibility and centralizing that data to allow you to execute quickly